Okay, so let's get started. That's uh, the topic of the talk today. And um, yeah, um, yeah, let's say hello and welcome everyone. Uh, this session is about uh, Terraform, uh, but this is not the usual Terraform session. Uh, don't get me wrong. I mean, every session uh, about Terraform is great. Uh, yeah, well, maybe most of them. Uh, we all love the tool and use it on a daily basis. Uh, but today I'm going to show you how you can use Terraform in a completely different way. And for all the developers out there, let me tell you, you will love it. And uh, for all attendees who have heard or even used the CDK for Terraform before you learn how to unleash the full potential of defining infrastructure as code, um, and I mean really like code, uh, objected, uh, object oriented code, for example, not uh, declarative configuration code. So with that, let's see what we're going to cover today. Uh, so first I will start with a short introduction. Um, what's the idea, the general idea behind the uh, um, cloud development kit for Terraform. Um, so I'm looking forward, I'm probably going to say CDKTF maybe. Uh, or CDK for Terraform. Um, and then, yeah, uh, I will continue with a brief history of the Cloud Development Kit, how that all got started. Uh, we take a deeper look at the CDK ecosystem. And then again, we dive deep a little bit on the CDK for Terraform. So the general concept, uh, what's the idea behind constructs? Um, and um, yeah, I, I show you more than later about that. Uh, then I have uh, prepared the live demo, uh, which is very interesting. And at the end, um, I'm going to give you a, an overview about the, the rough roadmap and what we're going to tackle in the next couple of weeks and months. And uh, hopefully, if time permits, we have a couple of minutes for Q&A then at the end. So with that, let's start with the introduction. So first, uh, my introduction. <laughs> so I'm Thorst Schiller, as you already said, I'm a CSA working at Microsoft and I'm working with our um, enterprise customers and, and accelerating their journey to the cloud. And so now let's see, um, what's the general idea about that? Why do we want to do that? And um, what are we doing at all? So we often hear customers say that uh, they want to define and provision infrastructure with the same familiar programming languages used um, to code their applications. and um, they don't want to need to uh, uh, learn another uh, domain specific language, maybe. Um, so sometimes, you know, you, you know that you write large Terraform files and you have like 200 times uh, written variables. Maybe that's not the best style then, uh, but uh, that can happen. And uh, of course, there, there might be a more elegant way. And that was also the, the motivation behind that. Um, and um, yeah, in, in the demo later, you will see what it means to come up with some object-oriented approaches for writing and defining architectures or, or um, in general Terraform resources. And uh, what the developers also love is use existing tools, test approaches, review processes, and of course their skills. So if, if there is a Python developer, a Java developer, uh, who is relatively new in, in, in the DevOps uh, topic maybe, and, and doesn't really know how to uh, write um, Terraform code in HCL, um, then of course it, it might be uh, handy uh, that, that he or she writes the code then in, in the uh, familiar programming language. So the, the use cases, um, different use cases, of course, all the use cases that Terraform in general uh, already uh, uh, fulfills, so to say. Um, but of course, more on the, on the complex, uh, more complex infrastructure provisioning level, it, it might be very suitable. Uh, if you have, for example, different abstraction layers and you want to reuse certain com components, well, you might say this is all possible with Terraform, but uh, I will show you in, in, in a bit of what, what that means. Yeah. Um, so if you want to do, for example, dynamic resource adjustments, you can do that on the fly. If you want to reuse the whole um, architecture you built maybe as a package, as a library, you know, more package from software development and not from uh, Terraform modules thinking ways. Um, you can also um, deploy your whole application, of course. And uh, if you want to apply, uh, some kind of resource related functionality 
um, then you can build everything around certain Terraform resources, all the stuff that you think is might might come come in very handy. For example, if you are working with a managed disk or something. Yeah? So maybe just one disclaimer. Uh, so today I'm I'm going to uh, work with a lot of Azure services. Obviously, I'm from Microsoft, uh, and but I think that doesn't mean anything. So um, it works, of course, for all the big uh, providers. So let's continue with a brief history um, of the cloud development kit and how that whole movement got started. And uh, I have a couple of information, but uh, um, yeah, let's see. So there was an internal application at Amazon a couple of years ago composed of many services. And there was a requirement to scale and, and, and deploy that application globally across multiple envi environments, of course. And initially, this team used CloudFormation, obviously, but this was resulting in, in huge uh, files, which, of course, were difficult to maintain across different versions. Um, the team could define the resources they needed to create, but it was not possible to build concepts of, of what those resources represented as a higher level abstraction, a storage layer, an ingestion pipeline, and so on. So the team did some research and finally built an initial library, which implemented a single component, a construct that represented a collection of cloud formation resources into building blocks, so to say. With this in place, the team could suddenly compose and share infrastructure resources as code. Again, the, the real code. Um, this also inspired the creation of uh, GSII, which became um, a key platform component for all CDKs. Let me tell you more about the GSII later. Um, yeah, then Amazon decided to make an official project out of it and released the developer preview in August 2018. Um, the general um, um, release announcement was, I think, one year later in, in July 2019. Um, and a couple of months later, end of 2019, they started to think about how the concept of the CDK might work for other scenarios like when it is in, in Terraform. At that time, there was another community-driven prototype on GitHub with the focus on using the CDK concept um, for Terraform purposes. Uh, the initiator and core contributor of that project was Sebastian Kaufmann who is, by the way, now working at HashiCorp. So guess what? All efforts that has been done in the uh, direction of CDKTF have been merged in spring last year, and the first publicly available alpha version has been released in August last year. Yeah, um, right now, last, uh, last month, uh, we released a 0 0.1 version, and um, this came with some major improvements, a lot of bug fixes, improved support for Terraform Cloud and support for additional languages. Um, yeah, that being said, uh, we're still in alpha, but it's stable and we're getting closer to production uh, with every release. So let's take a look at the CDK ecosystem. Um, as I told you already a little bit, uh, so there is uh, the mother of all CDKs, uh, the AWS CDK, which generates um, cloud formation um, underneath. And um, the CDK for Terraform, it generates, of course, it generates Terraform, but uh, you can also use it without then, for example, invoking uh, Terraform apply on the generator template. You can directly use, for example, CDKTF on the command line um, with the deploy command. For example. And there is also another uh, kit in the block, uh, which was uh, actually the, the, the second one and came uh, a little bit before uh, CDKTF, and this is CDKs, um, which I think I have a quick video of that. Hopefully, um, that plays well. So, um, of course, you 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 can guess what what that does. It generates charts out of uh, code as well, and you can also use all the different programming languages that GSII um, supports. So, this was also built by a small team at AWS and. Um, as far as I know, they continue to maintain it, but they transferred the ownership to, to CNCF a couple of months ago. So they are in, uh, in an official project of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation by now. Let's get back to, to that slide. Um, so talking again a little bit about uh, GSII. 
Um, so this means actually JavaScript interoperability interpreter. And what it means is, uh, yeah, it, um, it's like a TypeScript to many other languages, converter, so to say. So um, there is still a node process in the background. So if you, for example, write an application in Python or in Java or in C-sharp um, and um, yeah, run that application, that also means that in the background, there's still a node proce uh, process, which is uh, running the real code. So it's um, in, in, in real time, so to say, uh, con converted. So more or less like they are proxy calls to GSII which always invokes the function in the node process. Uh, so um, let's, let's take a look here. So here we have the, um, the TypeScript implementation. And on the right side, for example, there's Python, Java, and C-sharp with the same uh, thing. And um, so if you then invoke, for example, in Python, hello, say underscore hello, uh, this uh, underneath really still invokes the original say hello function on the left side. And, and you can imagine with this convers conversion in the background, the whole system is, is not very fast or performant, uh, but this is not necessary, uh, uh, yeah, necessarily really needed in this case, because, uh, yeah, I mean, you're not writing a game engine or something. So um, if, if it takes like three seconds or five seconds, doesn't really matter, right? So and there are probably a lot of other interesting use cases for GSII, but this talk is not about that. So. Let's continue. Again, back to the overview of the CDK ecosystem we have right now. And uh, since again, I'm from Microsoft, let me tell you that there is also a prototype in the make. Um, it's the ARM kit. And uh, hopefully we have something like a, a very early pre-release uh, sometime soon. So um, yeah, CDK for Terraform. Probably you're asking right now, what language does it support? Uh, currently, there is support for four languages, four or five, if you want to, <laughs> like JavaScript and TypeScript. Um, Python, Java, C Sharp um, is available since uh, early this year, and uh, Golang will uh, will yeah go will will come later this year. So of course, first it has to be implemented in GSII, and then we can adopt it in, in all the other CDKs and especially in, in CDKTF now. Um, there's also an, an issue tracker on, on the GSII project on GitHub. And uh, I think Go, Golang had the most upvotes. So uh, if, there, if, if you're in need for a certain language, uh, then um, just visit that and, and maybe you can upvote for, for other languages as well. I think Ruby is also some kind of popular. Okay, yeah. Um, I took this image here because I think it's uh, really beautiful, but um, it, it can be a <laughs> bit misleading because um, if you see on the right side CDK for Terraform, this one also generates JSON, right? Um, so um, Terraform compatible, compatible JSON, but uh, what it does, this picture is, it, it should il illustrate um, all the different uh, possibilities, how you can interact, so to say, with Terraform as a product. Uh, you can use JSON, HCL, um, you can use um, operators in Kubernetes, and uh, you can also use CDK for Terraform. And maybe there are some other ways, but uh, this is not uh, in that picture. So um, about the different modules here. So these are basically loosely coupled modules that there is not a deep integration between them. And um, if we start from the bottom, of course, there are all the different Terraform providers. We just saw it on that slide. And uh, that's why it's also really good is uh, we have support for all um, providers that Terraform supports. Uh, but we haven't, of course, really uh, tested each and every one of those. Um, but for the, the major ones, let's say, for the most important providers, uh, we, of course, we tested that and uh, they work good. So um, then there is a big building block of, of Terraform or Terraform CLI, however you want it. And uh, on top, there is this uh, layer of uh, HCL compatible JSON, which CDKTF generates, as I said. And um, these building blocks, I mean, uh, I, I was talking briefly about constructs again. That was the initial uh, project uh, uh, at AWS, which uh, had started to work on that. They built these constructs. And 
constructs are um, in general for all CDKs are the basic building blocks um, of, of uh, a Terraform application. Um, a construct in CDKT app represents a Terraform resource component and encapsulates everything Terraform needs in order to create the component. Um, so above that, we have level two constructs and uh, they can be used to provide intent-driven APIs. Um, like, for example, if, if you imagine an attach function uh, for a managed disk resource or something. So if, if you really want to use functions and methods, um, this is right now not supported on CDKTF, uh, but we are wrapping our heads around how we can make that possible soon. Um, and the level three constructs, um, of course, they are like the whole architecture of bigger building blocks, if you want to say, uh, I want to use uh, certain services together as one building block um, and maybe maintain it from, from within central IT department and give it out to other departments. So um, this might be uh, a level three construct. And, and of course, yeah, the level one constructs are the, the Terraform resources, like really the, for example, Azure services I, I'm listed here. So the overall all idea about construct uh, construct has been derived from Terraform modules. Uh, so make certain pieces, uh, single units, a set of units, or even the whole architecture composable and reusable. Um, yeah, and as I said, on a, on a different level than TF modules. So, uh, and if you're asking why not, or, or how does it look like, why is it different level? So resources and modules are, for example, private. Uh, they cannot uh, be adjusted uh, with constructs. That's not the case. You're you're way more flexible with that. Um, so now I have a section. Um, I'm just, uh, just quickly rushing through it uh, because uh, all the people that have started to play around with that, maybe uh, they, they, I don't want to uh, get them bored. So, um, but just a couple of slides about getting started. So first, um, let, let me tell you, it's it's really easy to get started with that. So first, you need to install CDKTF, for example, with uh, npm install minus g CDKTF CLI, um, and then you need to run in it. So I, I have it here. Oh, there's my mouse. So um, there you see the options, and um, you don't have to spec specify a lot. So for example, you can specify if you want to use local state management or remote state. Um, for simplicity purposes, I just use local for this demo. But if you, of course, it makes sense to use a remote backend, and, and you're able to do that as well, but not here on the command line. You have to do that in, in the code then later. Um, but one thing you have to do, of course, is choose the language uh, template and uh, yeah, choose the language, so to say, and uh, yeah, define a project name, description, and so on. So the next step, um, there you see just the, the output, uh, right? So then you need to generate um, constructs. Um, so in it, in it um, the init call in, uh, generates a couple of files, for example, uh, main uh, py, for example, if you choose uh, Python, uh, and cdktfjson. Um, and, and the latter one is the cdk configuration file, um, where you now have to add some things like, for example, the um, Terraform provider. So of course, we are using Azure RAM here with the latest version, but that's not the latest version. Uh, but um, that's fine. And uh, you can also use Terraform modules uh, if you want. Um, so, and yeah, here, here's a list uh, also of all the modules. Uh, you, you might be able to use those. Uh, but modules, as I said, are completely optional. So uh, no, no need to get started with modules. So uh, next thing we need to generate uh, the, the Azure provider constructs or type bindings. And um, this is what you do when you uh, do CDKTF uh, get on the command line. Um, the, the outline, uh, the output should be something like generated whatever Python constructs in the output directory inbox. And uh, then you can have a look at that. Then you see really Python code or Java, or whatever you, cho you have chosen. And uh, with all the objects that are us usually you're familiar with when they are Terraform resources. Okay, so um, 
So you can also use for, for uh, some of the most important um, providers, you can also use pre-built providers. Um, so it, this is uh, the fastest and simplest way of, of using that um, in contrast to generating the provider. Um, so you would then just install it like NPM install and so on. Um, but um, yeah, so this th there is one um, disadvantage, so to say. It's always referring to the latest version. So if you need a certain version, you have to generate the version yourself. Um, but I think either way, is, uh, it's very simple to get started with. Uh, but make sure not to mix up uh, imports, for example, that you're somehow mixing up imports with generated or with pre-built uh, modules. So if you update one or the other, then it might get bumpy. But um, yeah. So um, yeah, and then it's actually time to build your app or rather uh, start with adding a couple of resources into, into the Terraform stack. Um, a sub or skeleton that has been generated for you by the um, init command at the beginning. Um, so here you can see that I was uh, using Terraform module for AKS and with on, only a couple of lines, uh, maybe if, if they are long lines and we could say it's like more or less two lines, um, you, you have created an uh, Azure AKS cluster. And maybe if you know that uh, um, Terraform itself would also, if you use a module, then it's also not very uh, very huge file, um, but just uh, as a simple um, example here. So, and then at the end, uh, what you're going to do is um, maybe after adding that, you could just uh, invoke cdktf synt on the command line. And what it does is this command, it generates the Terraform code. And um, you can have a look at that Terraform code. Um, and it's looking like this, for example. So um, yeah, it's normal JSON, HDL comp compatible uh, Terraform code. And um, what you can do now is either use Terraform plan or apply if you have maybe an existing pipeline, or you can um, directly use CDKTF to deploy from the command line. And then you're basically done. That's your first CDKTF application. And within a couple of seconds, of course, <laughs> uh, the AKS cluster will uh, show up. So um, yeah, now it's time for a live demo, uh, but first, yeah, uh, a little bit of theory. So uh, just to set the scene and give you an, an overview about what we're going to do. So uh, Object-oriented uh, oriented programming principles are based on three pillars. And most of you probably know that. Um, we want to encapsulate uh, modules into classes. We want to use inheritance. So one class extends the other or something. And uh, polymorphism. So um, polymorphism is one of the major uh, OOPs, or object-oriented programming concepts, that allows us to use different classes with the same interface. Um, uh, you can use it to make sure that all classes that implement the same interface provide a common kind of functionality with some type specific implementation details. Think of different kind of animals that all need to eat something, but of course, in a different way. Um, we are also going to make use of the visitor pattern, which is built into CDK through, through all CDKs through I aspects. I'm going to show you in a second. Um, the visitor pattern is a well-known uh, design pattern, and the idea behind it is basically um, extending functionalities of classes without directly adding function members to the file, to the class itself, so from the outside. And um, it is classified as a behavioral pattern. Uh, so if you want to add a certain kind of behavior to a different but similar class, um, the visitor pattern is, uh, is your best friend, so to say. Uh, in our case, we are going to add the switch environment functionality to some Terraform resources using this pattern that allows us to switch from a dev environment to production environment and vice versa. And uh, you can imagine what that brings us. Um, if you have, a, um, for example, a very, uh, maybe a free tier or something uh, you, you have in your uh, dev environment and you know that uh, this doesn't you know, work in your production environment. You have to change it from free to paid a simple way. Um, then you want to do that. And you also have some whatever different kind of replication for your storage layer, like uh, local redundant storage, or maybe zone redundant, or 
geo location redundant storage and you want to switch that option um, and then this is also uh, kind of the same uh, um, behavior we want to do we want to switch environments so to say for all the resources we already have deployed in our case um, and so so we don't want to recreate the whole thing we just want to do that switch and then say okay my aks cluster has a uh, switch from from a free one to a paid one a uh, paid one by the way is uh, um, it's not a very expensive one it's just the one um, which offers slas to the customers and has a, a an, an improved upgrade uh, way so to say um but but there might also be some other things you can imagine here, right? So for example, uh, soft delete uh, in, in a key vault, you want to enable that that uh, that you need to have soft delete in place in a production environment. And and there are you know endless topics you you maybe want to achieve. And um, with that, let me quickly see. I think we are already running a little bit out of time. Let me quickly show you at least a little bit of that. So, okay, so this, this is the file. We have um, the, our main file and within the main file, we are normally just, uh, you know, use for example, a resource group and uh, we have different types like uh, Redis, like a key vault and so on. And you see, we also have the Kubernetes cluster, but um, the Kubernetes cluster is not a normal Kubernetes cluster. We can have a look at that. It's a Kubernetes cluster, which implements the interface of a switchable Terraform resource. What that means is this interface uh, brings us the functionality of switch environment. So the environments itself can be either dev, prod, or, or default, whatever. So um, here you see um, our environment switch. And the environment switch implements the I aspect, which I uh, mentioned earlier. And the, the visit function makes sure that every node in this tree get visited. And if the instance matches switchable Terraform resource, then I call the switch environment. So that means all the different components that I want to switch need to implement this um, interface. And of course, we need all the functionality of the Kubernetes cluster itself. So here we have um, um, the inheritance and here we have the polymorphic parts, so to say. So in, in the switch environment, we have the different, for example, tiers now, free and paid. In switchable Redis, we have basic and standard. And in storage, we have, for example, in depth, um, account replication type, access tier, and so on. We, we make some kind of difference. And what we do now is, and let me quickly at least run that once, um, is we are using our environment switch here at the end. And I'm going to move that. And uh, yeah, so then I'm invoking. And, so, and what that does is, yeah, now you see it's taking a second longer. No, 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 it's not taking so long. Um, then you see in the CDK uh, TF out folder the gen generated JSON. And here we have now paid. Yeah? And if I want to switch it back now, time doesn't allow me to do that. But then you, for example, would see here um, CD, uh, SKU tier free. And for all the other uh, things like uh, we have here premium, for example, and keyboard and so on. And then, of course, I can do CDK TF um, deploy. So, so let me, um, that works, uh, but I cannot prove it right now. So let me quickly talk about the roadmap and then we are done. Um, so looking forward, we we want to have better Terraform module support. Um, multiple stacks should be supported soon. Uh, the full Terraform HDL feature coverage. We want to uh, support custom data sources and resources. Language support for Golang as soon as uh, GSSI supports it. And we will have uh, some brain work to be done about level two constructs. With that being said, uh, yeah, check it out today. It's really easy to get started with. Uh, check it out, cdk.tf. Um, there are a lot of, of getting started guides and so on. And um, if you want, you can also take a look at cdk.tf demo, um, the, the one I just showed you and try it out yourself. With that, thanks everyone.